All right, we're here for some data management strand of our curriculum today. That's what we're working on for our daily math. As you can see, I started and then I had to restart. So don't, I'm trying to save paper by not printing out a new one. So let's be patient with our teacher. Um, so what we're gonna do is they're asking us to, during the annual community pet show, Martha surveyed the contestants. Now that just means she counted, she counted the pets that were there. Use the space below to create a bar graph of Martha's data. Here are her results. So we know that these are the types of pets that were there. She counted all the pets. So here, we're gonna have zero at the bottom. This is where we're gonna record the number of pets. Number of pet, pets. And then along the bottom, we're gonna have types of pets. And I don't have a lot of room here but I'm gonna do my best. So we know that we have to have 30. So we're gonna look here at our, at our space. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, what if we did, um, so we have to get to 30, just thinking. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is gonna be a group of 10, okay. One, two, three, four. That's going to be 20. I'm using my bars as much as I can. One, two, three, four, and this is going to be 30. Now I know 30 was my highest number, so my graph doesn't have to go higher than 30. My writing is very small. So this here is going to be 5, the midpoint. So it'll be skip 2, 5, skip 2, 10, skip 2, 15, skip 2, 20, skip 2, 25. So when I'm drawing my graph, those are that's how I will know um, how tall to make my bar. Now along the bottom, I'm gonna put the types of pets. So I have one, two, three, four, five types of pets. So one, two, three, four, five. So what we're gonna do is we'll make our bars um, one across with one in the middle. So I've got cats. I'm gonna start with cats. So I skip one and I put cats. I skip another one. I'm gonna put dogs, and they didn't give us much room to do this, so sorry if this is confusing. And then ferrets. I'm setting up my graph. Parrots, I like parrots. Fun fact, I like parrots. <laughs> and then guinea pigs, G-U-I, N-E-A-P-I-G-S. So we've got our graph set up. You can do yours whichever way you think is right. I probably could have spread mine out a little bit more. And now I'm gonna look, I'm going to, here's my bar for cats. I have 30 cats. So my bar has to go all the way up to the top. So I would color in, I'd mark my bar at the top, that's how high I'm going. And I would just color in the squares until I get to 30. Okay, and then maybe I'd outline it. I could use some, use a ruler to make it really neat. I'm gonna outline it to make my pretty bar graph. Now, bar graphs are really fun. <laughs> I really like them. They're my favorite kind of graph to make. All right, dogs. We have 22 dogs. So then I, I look at, this is where my dogs are. I have to make a column that shows 22. So I know this is, I'm gonna go up. Here's 20. Here's 25. 22 is going to be right here. Okay, about that. And then I'm going to draw my graph. I liked, I like the outline, so I'm going to do that now. Outline my bar. Right, outline the bar graph. And you can't really see the lines that well, but on your page you'll see the lines that I'm using. And then I'm going to color it in. I mean, you could just shade it with your pencil if you want, or you could make it pretty and, you know, get get your pencil crayons out. You've got, if you have time. Okay, ferrets, five ferrets. So for five, I look five here, go across. So five ferrets. So you see how my bar only goes up to the five? And then I color in my ferrets. So your bar only goes up to whatever number. These are the numbers 
that you're representing. Your bar only goes up till that number and then it stops. So ferrets only goes up to five and then it stops. Whereas cats goes all the way up to the top to 30. Dogs goes all the way up to 22. Ferrets goes here. So you can see by looking at this graph that there were a lot, very few ferrets compared to cats and dogs. All right, parrots, 10 parrots. That's actually pretty good. So here's where I'm, this is the column that I'm gonna put parrots in. I look over, I need 10. I look over and I find 10. I go across, I mark the top here. I can use my ruler to make nice lines if I want. Or you can just do it carefully if you don't have a ruler on hand. Okay, and then I'm going to color in my bar for parrots. And I'm gonna go on to guinea pigs. So there's eight guinea pigs. So this was 10, this line is 10. I'm gonna go a little bit below 10, right? Because it's not quite 10, eight is not quite 10. So almost right there is probably good. Okay, maybe I did it a little high, but that's okay. So doop, 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 doop. And then I'm gonna color it in. So we're gonna get into graphs a little bit more in, in the weeks to come, but that's a basic bar graph. So do your best. It does not have to be perfect. This is practice, so do your very best. And then you can pause the video if you need some time to make it, and then we'll continue. All right, so from reading the graph, we look at the questions. What, I'm gonna move my questions up so you can see the questions and the graph. So it says, what was the most popular pet? Okay, the most popular pet is gonna be the pet that had the most of it at the show. And this one has the, and it'll also be the one with the tallest bar on their bar graph. So cats, cats has the tallest bar, cats. So my answer is kitty friends, cats. Okay, how many pets came to the show? Now to find that out, you look at all the numbers and you're gonna have to, yes, add them up. So I'm going to do that, 30. I'm just gonna, to make it easier, I'm gonna group them. So five and 10 is 15. Um, 30 plus 22 is 52. So now I only have to do 52, right? Because 30 plus 22, you could also go 30 plus 22 plus five plus 10 plus eight, but sometimes when we make, we group them and we make it a little bit easier to add. So 30 plus 22 is 52, five plus 10 is 15, and then I have eight. So let's add them all together. I'm gonna use grandma and grandpa's way. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it a little bit clearer. I'm just gonna do it on a sticky note here so that you can ha see it. So 52 plus 15 plus eight. So 52, that's better, plus 15 plus eight. Okay, and we're adding because we wanna find the total of all the animals at the show. Okay, so looking here, I'm gonna do my adding. Okay, I look at my numbers, eight and two, I know that makes 10. Okay, and five more is 15. So eight, nine, 10, and five more than 10 is 15. So in my ones column, I have 15. I put my one there and my, or sorry, my, my ones, I have five ones, they go there, and I put my 10 up here because I have one 10. Now I'm gonna add them together. Five plus one is six and one more is seven. 75. All right, so 75 pets came to the show. Again, if you added it a different way and you got 75, then you know you did it correctly. We don't have to have the same strategy as everyone else. You're finding strategies that work for you. And we practiced a few strategies in class, so use what you're comfortable with. Okay, how many more dogs than guinea pigs were there? Okay, how many more dogs than guinea pigs? And when we hear how many more, that means we're finding the difference. Now the difference, we find the difference by subtracting the big number from the smaller number. So looking here, I have 22 dogs and eight guinea pigs, which means I have to do 22 subtract eight. So I'm gonna use my sticky note again. I'm gonna cross this out so that it's not distracting you. And I'm gonna look at my numbers. So I have 22 dogs subtract guinea pigs, eight guinea pigs. So 22 subtract eight, okay. Now I could go all in and do grandma and grandpa's way and cross it out, but it's just gonna give me the same, the same problem. Cause look, if I do two, subtract eight, I can't do it. 
Okay, so two, subtract eight, I can't do it. So I'm gonna model grandma and grandpa's way for you. Again, there is a quicker way to do this. If you are someone who likes to add, um, work in your head, you could totally do 22 subtract eight in your head. But if you're someone who likes to practice it and write it down, I'm gonna go through the steps with you so that you can practice it and write it down. So two subtract eight, I can't do it. So I'm going to borrow from the neighbor. So I'm gonna borrow, borrow a 10. Now I have 12 subtract eight. Now 12 subtract eight is four, and one subtract nothing is one. So there were 14 more dogs than guinea pigs at the show, 14. All right, what is the range of her data, the range? So the range is where you figure out the highest number and you subtract the lowest number. That's how you get the range of the data. So it tells you um, where it comes and goes from. So um, I am going to do that right now. Um, so it's the difference again from the highest number to the lowest number. So my highest number was cats at 30 and my lowest number was guinea pigs at eight. So we're going to do 30 subtract eight, okay? And I'm gonna just use my paper for this because I have lots of room now because I use my sticky notes for the other two. So I'm gonna find my paper and I'm gonna do 30 subtract eight to find the difference, right? This is gonna help me find the difference. So again, I'm gonna model grandma and grandpa's way. There are other quick ways to do this if you're good at working on, on this in your head, but I know that um, sometimes it's nice to just see it written down. So zero subtract eight, I can't do that. I'm going to borrow from my neighbor. So I take a 10, there's three tens here. I'm gonna borrow one, so now there's two tens. And now I have 10 subtract eight, which is two. And two subtract nothing is two. So the range of the data, that's the highest number, subtract the lowest number, that's how we find the range. The range of the data is 22, 22. All right, Marlene's mom lets her oh, Marlene's mom lets her play video games for 30 minutes every night. Lucky Marlene, how many hours does she play in a week? How many hours does she play in a month? So to know that, we have to know there are 7 days in a week. Okay, so 7 days in a week times 30 minutes, so half an hour. Okay, she's playing half an hour every day. So um, I'm going to draw this one. It's a different way to solve it, but I'm going to draw this one out. So I've got, um, let's look here. I have seven days. And so two halves make one hour, right? So I'm going to go Monday, Tuesday. That's one hour. Wednesday, Thursday. That's two hours. Friday, Saturday, that's three hours. And Sunday is half an hour. So she's got one, two, three and a half hours. So you don't have to draw it out. If you have a different way of solving it, you can. Three and a half hours per week. So that's three and a half hours a week of video games. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to in a month. So how many days are in a month? Think about it, 30 days. So here we figured out the week. How many hours in a week? She has three and a half hours in a week. Now we're gonna figure out the month. So let's say there's four weeks in a month. There is, there's four weeks in a month. Or 30 days. Now, if you think about it, oopsie, dropped my pen, um, or 30 days. All right, so four days, okay, or sorry, not four days, four weeks. So it's about three and a half hours a week. So let's do times four weeks, just for simplicity's sake. So four weeks, and it's about three and a half hours a week. A week. <laughs> so three and a half hours a week. So three plus three plus three 
plus three or three times four. Those are for our whole hours. We've added our whole hours, so three times four. Think about it, think about it. What's three times four? Think about it. Right, it's 12. So those are our whole hours. Now we still have these half hours. So you can imagine halves. Let's just put them in the basket. So two fit in a basket to make a whole. So let's count. We have four weeks with four halves. One, two, three, four. So that's two whole hours, right? I'm drawing it out just to make it a little bit simpler. I hope this isn't too confusing. So you, if you add up all your whole hours for the week, you have 12. So for the month, so three this week, three that week, three that week, three that week, there's 12. If you add up that half, those half hours, I'm just putting them in baskets. And two fit in a basket to make a whole hour. So one, two, three, four, I have two more hours. So 12 plus two more hours equals 14. We have 14 hours a month of video games. That's a lot of hours. But it's, you know, it's only half an hour a day. It adds up quick, but not as, I guess if she was doing an hour every day, that would be double that. So it would be 28 hours, which is more than a whole day a month. So half an hour is a good limit. 14 hours per month of video games. All right, let's move on to the next page. So for this one, we're going to be working on this multiplication and division. This is from the two-digit multiplication station. We're going to go through it. So it says, we know that multiplication and division are related operations. Remember, they're each the opposite of each other. Let's practice. For each multiplication equation, write two related division equations. Now, if you've been practicing your facts all week, this will be easy. Um, if you need a multiplication chart, you can find one online or you could write out your tables. It's totally up to you. But if this is difficult for you, that means that you need to keep practicing those facts, right? Because the more we practice, the easier they get. So 10 times 4 is 40. Now to set up your division sentences, start with the biggest number. 40 divided by 10 is 4. And again, my division sentence always starts with the bigger number. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Okay, that's all we're doing. Now, 5 times 6 is 30. Start with the bigger number, 30, because that's the product for multiplication. Divided by 5 is 6, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. All I'm doing is rearranging them. Okay, 16, my biggest number. 2 times 8 is 16. So both of my sentences for division are going to start with 16, because that's my biggest number. You start with the product. And then divided by 8 is 2. And divided by 2 is 8. Okay, on to the next one. 9 times 3 is 27. So again, I start with my product of multiplication, my biggest number, 27. I'm going to write as neatly as I can. It's easier now that I'm not holding the camera. Okay, so div 27 divided by 3 is 9. We have to use all these numbers. 27 divided by 9 is 3. Let's move on to the next one. And again, if you are really quick at this and you've already done it, you don't have to watch through the whole video. You can fast forward to the next part. But if you still need some help, we'll work through it together. Okay, biggest number, my product, 48 divided by 8 is 6. 48 divided by 6 is 8. Okay, 42, my product. Let's work through it. My biggest number goes first. My product goes first because that's what we're dividing. So 42 divided by 6 is 7. 42 divided by 7 is 6. Again, I've used all of my numbers. I rearranged them, and then it makes sense. Okay, my product of my multiplication, 3 times 4, the product is 12. I'm going to put that as my first number in my division sentence. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, on to the next one, 56. My favorite fact, eight times seven is 56, is my favorite. Okay, well, that and three times seven is 21. 56 divided by eight is seven. 56 divided by seven is eight. Okay, looking here, two times three is six, the product is six. Put that first. 
6 divided by 2 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, 5 times 10 is 50. So 50 is my biggest number. It goes first. 50 divided by 10 is 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10. Are you sick of hearing me say numbers yet? A little bit more to go. You can, you've got this. Okay, let's find the biggest one. The product of the multiplication is the number we're going to be dividing. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I'm just moving these numbers around. I'm using all the same numbers in the box. Remember, these are fact families. They live happily in their fact houses. This is more like a fact apartment block, I think. Okay, so <laughs> the product is 14. And then I'm going to use my two other numbers. Divided by 7 is 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Oh, very nice. On to the next. So it says write two multiplication equations for and two division equations that are represented by each array. So arrays, we've been working on these since grade three, and all you're going to do is you're going to count the rows. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are groups of six, and I have one, two, three groups of six. So three groups of six. What is three times six? Think about it. Think about it. Right, it's 18. Okay, now we're going to do it again. If I flip my array this way, I have six groups of three. Now, I didn't change my number. Remember, we practiced this yesterday with commutative property. But six divided by three is 18. So this is commutative property in action. Turn your array. That's all you're doing. Now, looking here, we know we're going to look at our products. 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. So that means if I was to go and group them, so 18 divided by 6, I'm taking 18 and I'm, I can either look at it as I'm breaking it into three groups of 6, divided into groups of 6 is 3, and I can also look at it as 18, I'm going to switch colors here, Divided into groups of three gives me six groups. So it goes both ways. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but okay. Next one I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of one, two, three, four. So seven times four. Seven times four is, think about it, right. 7 times 4 is 28. You could also go and count all these if you don't believe me, but 4 times 7 is 28. Okay, and now I'm looking here. I'm going to start with my product. 28 divided by 4 is 7, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. Okay, on to the next one. So I've got here... Um, I'm going to count my groups. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and I have two of those groups. So that's five groups of two. Two, four, six, eight, ten it is ten. And that's the same as two groups of five is ten. Now, if you want to practice this, you could go grab some pennies or Lego bricks or any number of things and try building some of these arrays and writing the multiplication and division sentences to go with it. Now looking at my division, I'm going to start with my product of multiplication, my 10. That's the whole number here that I'm breaking up into groups of 2, so that'd be 5, 10 divided into groups of 5. I'd have two groups. All right. I know that this is something that's hard to get our heads around. That's why I really like arrays for practicing division. So I encourage you right now is to go and find something in your house you can build arrays with. You could even draw the arrays. Build some arrays. Maybe try 8 times 7 is 56 if you've got lots of pennies. But build your arrays and practice writing out the multiplication. So I would count how many rows of how many objects I have. Write out your multiplication and your division. And if that isn't something you feel like doing, maybe you could just go practice your multiplication and division facts. 
hope that video was helpful if you were stuck or if you just needed to check and make sure you were on the right track. So thank you for checking out the videos. Thank you for showing up. It really means a lot that you're staying connected and uh, keeping on with your learning. Now remember, over spring break, there's no homework for you for me. So this is a time for you to take a break. But maybe don't take a break completely for math. If you're bored and you're looking for things to do, check out my math games uh, playlist on my YouTube channel. And hopefully there'll be something there that you'd like. They're not all made by me. I share good ones from other people too. Um, and remember there's some games in your package. You also have Reflex and Prodigy and Sumdog. So find a way to make math fun over the next week. If you're thinking you're bored and you're, you're just sitting around and need something to do, remember all the math games we practiced in class, lots of different um, activities that you can do, or maybe just, you know, play some Sumdog. Anyway, I hope you have a great spring break, and I will see you back here the first Monday after spring break for more math. Have a wonderful day.